Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Andrew Nolte. I'm a software engineer uh, here at Hudson River Trading, and uh, today I'm presenting uh, the Slang Language Server. Uh, we're calling it the Slang Server. Um, so a little bit of background. Um, so what is the language server, and like how do we get here? Um, so a language server, the language server protocol is a protocol to implement IDE-like features in uh, uh, like agnostic of the editor. So um, VS Code, NeoVim, Sublime. Um, so an LSP server is implemented for a language and an LSP client for a text editor. Um, and so it's implemented over a JSON RPC um, over any transport, typically just standard in, standard out. You could also do TCP and some others. Um, so first, uh, a bit of like how we got here. Um, so I started tinkering a bit on this extension uh, a couple of years ago. Um, it's the most popular Sumerilog extension out there. It uses C tags in the back end um, to parse. Um, I started making some contributions, adding slang linting and go to definition across files, um, for modules at least. Um, but I wanted to do a lot more features. So um, I talked with the author and we agreed like I should make a fork of it. Um, so I uh, ripped out the blue spec and the BHDL um, and then uh, iterated on that a bunch. Um, but C tags has its limits. Um, it's also like TypeScript subprocessing out in C tags. Um, so uh, when uh, approached to do like a sort of like surge project is what we call it, so like our hackathon, um, we really wanted to rewrite this using slang in C++. Um, uh, and it was the obvious choice since uh, Mike is our head of FPGA software and he like sits right across uh, the road from me. Um, so I could just ask him any questions uh, I had. So why slang? Um, so this is uh, mainly why. So it's the fastest and most compliant system error log parser. Um, fastest is hard to define, but if you use the bottom number, it's fastest. Um, and variable does have a language server, but they don't really have a preprocessor, which is like a lot of system Verilog because there's a lot of if defs and, and such. And it's really important to understand those as well. Um, so first, before we get to the features, uh, I wanted to talk a bit about the trade-offs uh, when designing the language server. So the protocol tells you all the API routes that you could implement. It doesn't tell you how you should go about doing those. So the first uh, one is indexing. Um, I'm sure many of you have had the experience where you open up an IDE uh, and it just sits there indexing your code base and you no features. So um, we initially thought this was gonna be a problem, um, but we just tried doing the dumb thing and indexing everything and it actually worked really well. Um, so it's, it's able to open uh, index our code base on open. Uh, so thousands of system log files, tens of megabytes of code, uh, all under one second. And then we tested it on open source repos too, like open Titan, uh, it's able to index that in like 0.4 seconds. Um, so uh, we're, we're okay with this uh, right now, but in the future we could have a uh, index cache. Um, and then some other trade-offs, um, typically in HDL, it requires that you have a full compilation, uh, like the full, uh, all, all of the files you need for a design. Um, but for a, a real-time language server, um, you really want just what you need. So we, what we do is we do this sh thing called a shallow compilation. Uh, we just get, grab the syntax trees that we need when looking at that document. Um, so it doesn't fully elaborate everything, uh, but we get all the symbols and such. Um, another issue with that is uh, untaken um, gen, uh, gen blocks. Uh, would normally not get any symbols because it just skips over all of it. Um, but uh, we're able to tweak the compilation options a bit to get this, um, uh, get these symbols, and as well as diagnostic. So you can see here, cond is one, but we still get a diagnostic on a uh, like incorrect port name on the untaken branch. Um, and then if def branches in preprocessors are still like not solved, but it should be fairly simpler, simple to do a token or expression lookup uh, on those. So uh, now for the language features. Um, so I sort of ordered these in the like what I consider like the most important. Uh, um, so I, I think most important is diagnostics. Um, this enables you to write without uh, switching back to the terminal uh, and recompiling every time. 
Um, Sling is uh, obviously great at this. Uh, we've had this in the, the other extensions as well where it just parses the Sling output. Um, but with this, it's able to go a lot faster. It doesn't have to reparse the syntax trees uh, from other documents, for example. So um, it can give it to you on every change. No need to wait for a save. Um, these also link to the Sling docs. Uh, so if you can read more on that warning and turn it off. Um, and it's configurable with the same exact Sling flags that you use for your normal CI. Um, the next is go-tos and hovers. Um, so these are out of the box, snappy go-tos and hovers on most symbols. Um, we're still working on a bit of that coverage with like uh, the uh, sy more system Verilog verification side of things. Um, and we use snapshot testing or golden testing to confirm the coverage. So we sort of annotate a file like this. Um, another big thing is macros. Um, so macro args are supported by looking up that token. Um, and then if a symbol is defined behind a macro like this one is, um, it shows you that syntax on hover, so that what's expanded in that macro. Um, and then go to definition uh, also goes to that, uh, that macro usage. So you can see here it says expanded from assert. Um, and then uh, for scope symbols, um, so let's say you have like an import package star, uh, like wildcard import, um, it'll tell you the uh, full scope of those if it's not in the current scope. So here we just have normal, uh, like uh, this is actually a completion, um, but yeah, we have that like additional context there as well in the in the hovers. Um, uh, and now for uh, completions. Um, so this is a huge unlock for productivity. Um, it's not AI auto completions. It's like deterministic real completions uh, with useful info. Um, so uh, we'll start with module completions because uh, this is like a huge unlock. Uh, this is, you, you're just typing a module normally and then you press enter and then it fills uh, it in for you. And then it's sort of like a form, you tab through it and then choose which uh, parameters you want to override and which uh, ports you, you set. Um, and it's pretty intuitive and discoverable. Like you'll just be typing a module like normal um, and then this, uh, this pop-up will, will show up. Um, so the next is member completion. So after uh, that module completion, I just hit tab. And then now it's looking at uh, different registers that I can add. And then it shows a little hover on the right here. Um, and then we also have package completions, very similar member completions. Um, uh, hierarchical completions, so like diving into a struct. Um, macro completions. Um, Part of the uh, indexing is it indexes the macros as well um, as, the, as the top level symbols. Um, your document symbol tree um, on the left. And then uh, we also have this feature, uh, if you click this button on the top right, um, you get a uh, expanded view of that file uh, side by side. Uh, now let's get to the, some of the HDL features. Um, so hierarchy view, um, similar to like what GTK Wave or Surfer would have on the left-hand side. Um, we get these resolve types here. Um, and we also have toggles up here for toggling uh, parameters, um, logic types, as well as macro-defined symbols. And then modules view, uh, same instances, just indexed by modules. Um, and then we have some options for setting a compilation. So you can set the top level and it'll just grab all the modules from the index. Uh, so you can pretty much run this on any repo, no configuration at all, and you'll be able to set a compilation. And then another is uh, you can choose a glob for uh, .f files. Uh, and we might e expand uh, for different ways of setting a compilation in the future. Um, and then once you're in a compilation, uh, you want to select an instance. So there's a select instance command. Um, as well as terminal links. So if you have like some assertion fire and a hierarchical path, you can just command click on that um, and it'll open up for you in the compilation view. Um, we also have some experimental waveform viewer integration. So this is going back and forth between NeoVim and Surfer right here. And then it's also adding the drivers and loads within Surfer. Um, and that could also be done within uh, your editor as well. Um, so what's next? Um, so uh, definitely some more MCP work. We want to get that uh, WCP uh, thing working on VS Code uh, with Surfer and VS Code as well as Vaporview. 
Um, we're going to improve the GoTo coverage. That's because that's a pretty important feature. Um, we want to do GoTo references. Uh, we'll unlock symbol, symbol renaming. Uh, macro expansion on hovers, inlay hints. Here's an example of that. Also, inlay hints for the values of signals uh, from a waveform. Uh, server actions like auto fixes, uh, as well as a formatter. All right, so special thanks to Mike, uh, the Surge team, uh, and then uh, Dr. Patrick at uh, GitML. That's the JSON serialization library we use, re reflects UPP. Um, all right, questions? <laughs> This looks amazing. Um, one question: If I had say, say, I had this nice like um, uh, flow into Yosis, and I wanted my LSP to give me a quick estimate of like longest path or module size, is there a nice kind of plug-in way of doing this for the LSP, or a plan for it? Uh, not right now with Yosis. Um, yeah, I think it, it can always be be added though in the future. Um, uh, and, and it would also be nice, I think, if we had like an API for other uh, VS Code extensions to like query the slang compilation, for example, so that way you don't have to recompile the whole thing on a different extension. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.